All right, we're going to tie the cheech leech for you. This has been probably one of my favorite patterns to fish. Um, we're doing it with a twist, though. Um, this, I think you guys have seen some of these hooks before, maybe in the bait section of your shop. But very applicable to fly tying. And it's probably some of the best hook points you'll see, especially for chasing the big stuff. We're using the, the laser trocar size one aughts finesse worm. Um, they come with a barb so that your plastic worm doesn't come off. But guess what? We're not fishing with worms like Curtis does. And they're just made out of plastic. You can cut them right off. I don't recommend using one of these knives though. They suck. Alright, All right, so we're going to start with the back half of the Cheech Leech. Um, just by dressing the hook with a little bit of thread. Now the tail on this is completely made of semi seal. Uh, don't don't confuse it with semi seal. This is this is the John Romer product out of Arizona. This is the real deal. Uh, you just take out a bunch of the semi seal. You kind of preen it a little bit and you just grab a clump of it and tie it in. Once I tie it in I kind of pull any extra fibers that might not have tied in and I stack them on top. I could just cut this off but it'll make a huge bump so I'm just going to push it forward and wrap it forward onto the hook. Okay the next step is to tie in three pieces of crystal flash on each side of the tail. I'm just going to take the clump tie it in just with a couple wraps on one side and then I'm going to fold them over onto the other side of the tail and then I'm going to pull them tight and trim them the length of the tail now what we have is Palmer chenille as you can see only the, the material is only on one side of the chenille so I'm just going to tie that in kind of like a hackle on a woolly bugger So I've got that tied in. Um, what I'm going to do now is make a dubbing loop out of Arizona semi seal material, the same stuff we use for the tail, right at the back. Um, and then we'll dub that forward. The turbo dubbing twister is a must for this, unless you want to spend a lot of time twisting up your dubbing loops. So I'll use that. All right, the color that I'm using for this one is Canadian brown or Yukon brown, depending on how it's marketed. But uh, I'm basically going to just twist that loop up and see how fast that twists up. And then I really like to use a rotary feature uh, to wrap this on the, the hook. As you see, it's really thick and nasty looking. It's not supposed to be pretty yet. So I'm going to just tie that off trim off the excess and then I'm going to take this hackle or the, the palmer chenille and wrap it up through and I'm going to use my rotary feature again for that and again this this is not a good looking fly by any means you can see it's really messy got fibers coming out the front and trim that off pull everything back and it's really important to get a good head on this and whip finish it because we're going to brush it out with Velcro. Alright, nothing special. So, Alright, so now we're going to use a very technical piece of material for tying the fly. Uh, this pen came from a hotel somewhere. It's got to be a pen from a hotel or else it won't work. You glue the Velcro right on the top. And we're just going to get in there and see the, the Velcro on the pen is the key. We're just going to brush it out, get really rough. So if you don't do a real tight loop, it's going to all come out at this point. Preen all those fibers back. And now you can see why this thing would be attractive to the fish. Alright, that's essentially the back half of the fly. Alright, we're going to do the front half of the fly of the Cheech Leech. Just attach your thread 
and we're going to use barbell eyes on this. You can use any barbell eye that you want. You can use the clear cure goo eyes, um, although it's not going to add any weight. But I, I really like to take the eyes and just figure eight those on top of the hook shank first, and then I'll rotate them under. Um, if you try to figure eight from the bottom, it, it can get kind of difficult. All right, uh, I used to use super glue on this, uh, except now I figured out that there's hydro, so I'm going to throw on some of that just to keep those barbell eyes nice and in place. We're going to put a dubbing loop all through those, um, so we just want to make sure that they don't move around when we're dubbing in between those. Just a real quick tag. Use the Pro Light, it'll cure right up. Another thing we're doing, we're just using beadlon from the craft store to attach these. It's plenty strong if you use, if you double it over. Um, so, just nip off a little bit of that. And I tie it in with, with plenty of wire going out the front of the hook so we can double it over. And one of the keys so that the back section won't hang on the front section of this fly is typically you would only tie about to here on this hook because the bend starts. I wrap down the bend a little bit so that the back section comes off more more kind of straight off the back of the hook as opposed to right off the top where it, it could hang up more. So I'm just going to let that hang out for a little bit. Um, I like using plastic beads on this. Glass beads will break. Um, and you can use any size beads on this. I've got some about four millimeter plastic beads. All right, so I'm just gonna simply put that through the back fly. And then I'm gonna thread that back through the hooks or the, the beads and then pull it to the length that I want. I'm just going to pinch that where it needs to be and then wrap back to where the beads come off. So that's our articulation. Once I get up to the front, I'm just going to trim these both the same length. Go up to the eyes and then fold that over. So if you catch like a monster 13 inch fish it will not pull the back half of fly off all right all right the front half of fly is real simple I'm just gonna use do the same exact thing I did for for the back half of the fly just tie in some of this Palmer chenille make a dubbing loop and wrap it forward <coughs> Okay, this is the part where this fly kind of takes shape. The back half, as you can see, is all artificial material. That's not going to retain water. That's going to shed the water, make it easier to cast. And then in the front, I'm going to put a big soft hackle of marabou up here. And what that does is it makes the front move differently from the back, and it kind of makes it shimmy a little bit in the water. Okay, we're just going to take a couple common pieces of marabou. And I'm going to grab the marabou right at the tip. I'm going to fold, kind of preen it down a little bit so that I, I have a tie-in point. So I'm going to tie this marabou in tip first. And just kind of lay it along the back of the hook shank. I'm going to do that also with an orange piece and a brown piece. Okay, now I've, I've seen a lot of guys do soft tackles out of marabou and they make it look perfect right from the get-go. I'm more of a speed guy and it's what it's going to look like after I wrap it. So don't, don't get freaked out if it looks like crap at first. So I'm going to pull both, all three hackles up, or marabou's up. I'm going to kind of work that around the hook. I'm going to help it out just a little bit. You're going to want to keep this right behind the eyes. There's just marabou going everywhere. Hold it straight up. Come in and get a real good snug wrap behind them. Just one wrap is usually enough and I pull everything back and wrap it down. 
And what that does is it it makes it a lot more durable as well so that it's more than just the tips that are tied in. Then I just go through and find those stems and trim them off. I know what you're thinking, this isn't a very clean looking fly. Here's another tool that I really like. I'm going to use this to comb out my marabou. So you'll see after I get done combing this out, it's going to look like we meant it to be that way. So really nice looking fly at this point, which kind of doesn't matter because it's not going to look like that in the water. So I'm going to pull everything back again, give it a couple more snug wraps. All right, the next step is to put in some rubber legs or some silly legs. Uh, I found this color on fishingskirts.com. It's a place that supplies all your bass fishermen with their skirts for jigs. And so it's kind of like got an orange, olive, and brown tinge to it. And I'm just going to tie, take three of these, tie three of them in on each side. Just going to tie it in on one side and double it over and tie it in on the other side. Again, real messy. And pull these out and trim them about the length of the marabou. Okay, to finish up the fly, I'm just going to put another dubbing loop of semi-seal in between the eyes, but I have all this junk hanging down, so I'm going to take a piece of lead and just wrap it around the fly just to get everything out of the way. Um, and I usually like to make the dubbing loop from in front of the barbell eyes. Okay, before I wrap this one, I want to get a little bit of the bulk out of the loop, so I'm going to come pick it out with, a, with the Velcro, just a tiny bit not too rigorous. Alright. I'm going to use the rotary tool for this as well. So sometimes I do two wraps, sometimes I do three wraps behind the barbell eyes and then I start figure eighting um, between the barbell eyes. Oh, I just broke my loop, no problem. And then just do two or three more wraps in front of the eyes. Trim that off, pull everything out of the way, and then make a pronounced head, and whip finish it. Alright, doesn't look like much right here, so let's brush out the head. You can just brush everything out and we'll push it toward the back. So we've essentially formed the head and we'll take this off, comb it out a little bit more and that's our cheech leech. <laughs>